So first, we're going to show two films. We're showing a short film, and then uh, many of you are here tonight for the feature, Art of the Prank. But we love showing short films by our uh, alumni so we can introduce you to some, some cool new artists and cool new work. And so first, I'd like to introduce our uh, short film filmmaker, uh, co-writer co and co-producer, and other many other things, Mayel Dalavo, and, um, and moderating this brief Q&A is Katie Mae Hudson, who is a current student in the, um, in the MPS directing program. Um, yeah, MPS directing program, right? Am I right? Yeah, something. Um, so come on up, and we'll do a quick Q&A with them, and then we'll show the short, and then I'll be back to introduce the man of the hour, Joey Skaggs. Uh, welcome back Thank to SVA. You. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, uh, how have things been since uh, graduating from SVA? Really good, very busy. Um, I graduated with an MFA in illustration in 2013, so I'm not a direct film major. Um, and I've been doing a whole bunch of different things. I work pretty regularly for the New York Times as an illustrator. I have been working in fabrication with um, ad agencies. Uh, I just emailed my first kid's book to my editor today. Ah, congratulations. Thank you, so I'm very happy about that. Mm. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's been very varied, and on the side I've also been doing comedy. Um, when I first started at SBA, the first week I started taking classes at UCB, which is the Upright Citizens Brigade, which is also up the street, and a wonderful uh, improv comedy theater and school. And I did that for several years, all throughout my uh, education here. And at, towards a couple years ago, I was part of a um, comedy digital team, was what they're called, uh, along with about seven other people. And our task was to make humorous short films. So Wonderful. Yeah. And do you have uh, your director here as well, yes, Tom? Yes, my uh, co-writer and director, Evan. Tom. I don't know if you want to stand up. So everyone can clap for you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is, is Tom uh, someone you met through UCB? To Tom collaborate? is someone I met through UCB. Uh, I think we'd known each other a couple years before then, but this was our first kind of creative partnership, and I hope the first of many more. Mm. Even though it's been a little while since the film came out already, we're just both busy people, as New Yorkers tend to get. So, yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about <coughs> your process with making the film that we're about to see? Um, it started off, so the story was uh, a little nugget of an idea I had, and we, we had a, a pitch meeting very early on with, um, the team was called Also Also, and everyone, it was really a lovely creative experience because everyone was able to contribute at every stage of the process, so even though we all narrowed in on certain projects, everyone was able to write if they wanted to and kind of uh, tackle different things, but everyone also had their specialty. So I was the art director of the team, but I got this experience and I pitched an idea and people you know, got excited about it, and so I went off and wrote some drafts and then I worked with Tom and then we had a lot of drafts by the <laughs> end, um, which was good because I, I think everyone made it better and better. And and I uh, made some puppets for it, which I was very lucky. I took a, a puppet making class at SVA, though we didn't do the type of puppet that I ended up making for the film in the class. Um, but it was another kind of part of my education here that I, you know, took with me Wonderful. along the road. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, I look forward to watching it. And thank you yeah. and congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because I think there's some surprises that are nice to not know about. Okay, so. well, we'll look out for those. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Joey Skaggs is a fine artist and social activist. Although he has painted and sculpted throughout his life, starting with his iconoclastic and controversial performance art protests in the 60s, his... His public work took on a new direction. Skaggs realized he could use art in, to challenge the system. Well, here we are. Hello. Hi. We've got you in one piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Everything okay? Yeah. Did anyone Google Kentuckians for coal? <laughs> I d this is a hoax I just did during the eclipse. I'm living in Kentucky taking care of mom, and the eclipse was... We had the epicenter there, and I just couldn't, well, I gotta do something. So I did Kentuckians for Coal, 
And well, when you read about it, you'll see what happened. And I, I haven't done the expose. This is the expose for Kentuckians for Coal. There were people who called up and wanted to, you know, to kill me. <laughs> that happens a lot, though. So. <laughs> well, thanks for making us part of this yeah, event. I'm happy. Yeah. Firstly, congratulations on the film. It's a, a wonderful film and a wonderful career. Thank you. I wish Andrea were here, the director. He's in Italy. Uh, he couldn't be with us, but I will tell him. Yes, thank you. And we have Judy here as well. Who producer, producer Judy, Judy Droz. You want to stand up, Judy? <laughs> Actually, we have, we have quite a few people here, and I'd love for you all to be acknowledged who have been in my performances or have been behind the scenes or have helped me. Sarah, you want to stand up? Where's Sarah? Uh, where's Meryl? Meryl, stand up. Meryl. Every, who, who else is here? I mean, in a whole... Uh, who's here? Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, where's Kate? Uh, uh, there's Kate. Okay. And uh, Roger. Where's Roger and his wife Cindy? Stand up. Okay. I, there's, I'm sure. I, who am I missing? Oh well. There's. Uh, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> James, where are you? James, there's James, and Deborah, thank you. And Buck, where's Buck? Oh, Buck, we did Buck. Oh, there's Buck, Buck Wolf. And Jeff, where's Jeff? Jeff did the music, actually. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Fantastic. Jeff and and and, and Caroline made a big effort. Yeah, a big effort to come all the way down from Norwich, New York, one of my one of my homes. Okay. Wonderful. So you have a lot of supporters here and a yeah. lot of people that have <coughs> have helped you with your uh, with your art over the years. The film is after two years making the film festival circuit. Um, this is this is the last screening and, and t for film festivals and special screenings. Except we have two distributors, and the film Judy. When is it? It's in October. And so then that we was have October oh, okay. 9th, October 9th. And then we have an, a, an educational distributor, and they'll be launching it, special screenings and uh, other events, community screenings. So we're happy that you know, the film will be seen. That was the whole purpose, to share the work. It's great. And just uh, so it's on mic, because this is being filmed as well. So it's right. October 9th. It's available on iTunes. Uh, to purchase uh, for people that weren't able to be here tonight. Amazon, Google Amazon, Flash. Google Play. Yeah. Um, October 9th is right. the release. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so as this is an SVA alumni event, um, uh, is there any uh, stories or? Uh, I was afraid you'd do that. I'm just asking. Just asking if you have a, a wonderful uh, insight into well, studying I'm here. Yeah, I am totally indebted to SVA for helping me as a young artist and as, a, as an adult artist. They've been so supportive, so wonderful. Um, I, I know they would shit if I told the whole story. I told you the story off, off camera. You did, yes. Um, is it okay to tell that story? I, I, I'm not, in, I'm just here to you're, support you're you. <coughs> Um, I have nothing but the utmost respect for everyone at SVA. I was a young student here in the 60s, early 60s, and I was not a student type. I had gone to the High School of Art and Design, as you had seen. Um, but uh, I had a wonderful teacher, Herbert Gessner III. Is Eli here? Eli is Herbie's son. Paige is his daughter. Herbie passed away at, I think, the age of 43. But Herbie loved me. He was my teacher. And Herbie hired me to be a designer for his company. And uh, Herbie also had me come in to substitute teach. And so I didn't even have a degree. And I would be teaching Herbie's classes, uh, media communications and studio design work and all that. And Herbie had a business where I was an employee 
with weird hours designing products. Only Herbie was kind of a little shady in the business department. And when Herbie couldn't pay the bills, Herbie would move the whole factory to another town and fake a letterhead and an address and start anew with whoever provided him with the materials and the equipment. He would just steal it all. And uh, the, the police were after Herbie, and Herbie took his wife, Cheryl, who was my classmate. You can imagine what Herbie was like. And his, and his two kids to St. Croix. And he said, Joey, I don't want you to go to St. Croix and, and stay with Cheryl and my kids. And would you like to go to St. Croix? I said, sure. So I went to St. Croix, and Herbie went back to New York to do what he had to do. And it got too intense for Herbie, avoiding the police. So Herbie came back to St. Croix and said, Joey, I want you to teach my classes. You want to teach my classes? I said, sure. He said, I have three classes, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. One is you know, 9 to 12, one is from 1 to 4, whatever it was. And I'll give you $75. I said, great. <laughs> he says, you go to the registrar's office, and he told me where it was. You get the, the instruction, the, the, the book for who's in the class, and teach the class and give them grades, and you know, I'll send you a check. I said, okay, great. So I came back to New York, and I... Opening day, went to SVA, the registrar's office, got to class, went to my office, went to my, went to my room, and I taught the class for over a semester. And then into the second semester, a gentleman would come every class with a subpoena. Herbert Gessner? I said, nope, Joey Skaggs. <laughs> <laughs> Herbert Gessner? Nope. This Herbert Gessner, Media Communications, room 206? I said, it is, but I'm not Herbert Gessner. So he gave up, and then the school sent a monitor to say, we'd like to see you in the office. And I went down there, and Richard Wilde, the chairman of the department, uh, said, uh, where's Herbie Gessner? I said, well, he's in St. Croix. St. Croix? How long has he been in St. Croix? Six months. Six months? How long have you been teaching your class? Six, seven months. Six or seven months? <laughs> Who's paying you? I said, well, Herbie was going to pay me, but he never did. Herbie never paid you? You have, you've been teaching this class for real? Yeah. I said, well, Herbie's fired and you have the class. <laughs> and not only that, but if you want to go to school and get a degree, we'll give you a scholarship. I said, okay. So I got a scholarship for SVA. <laughs> so I am deeply indebted to these people. <laughs> and all of my students who are fooled. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm crying up here, um, and I've heard the story before. Um, uh, wh uh, what was your process like working on this on this film? How did how did you all find each other? How did it come about? What, how long did it take to to um, be born? Okay, uh, I apologize to everyone who's heard this before, um, but I was lecturing at a university in Rome. There was someone in the audience who was laughing a lot. Uh, he said, uh, I want to take you guys out for dinner. Judy and I went out with about 16 or 18 people. And uh, he said, I want to produce a documentary about Joey. And uh, we said, okay. So we were staying with Deborah and James. And uh, he, McKellar brought in a young director, 27 years old, uh, Andrea Marini. And he just started shooting. And uh, I couldn't get rid of him. And he's a wonderful uh, filmmaker, and well, you saw what he does. And we didn't have a contract, nothing. And he just stuck with me. And he wanted to do a current narrative. I said, pretend I'm dead. Here's 50 years of my work. Just go through that. You can make any kind of movie you want. I, I fucked everybody. Just you know, put it together. No, I want a current narrative. I said, well, that's kind of difficult to do, because when I do a prank, I'm putting a juicy worm on a hook and putting it out there, but that doesn't mean anyone's gonna bite it. And what are you gonna do, have a cameraman, a sound man, a director waiting for my phone to ring? I'm in buttfuck Kentucky. You know, so I said, the only thing I can think of is if I front load a hoax that you can document and then try to launch it as a hoax later. This way you can get coverage. So I came up with genetic, uh, transgenetic stuff with the shark's teeth. 
And we were able to do all that, and that meant that I had to get my film crew, and he had his film crew. And at one point in, in an office, a dentist's office in, in Hawaii, uh, I had three cameramen, my crew, filming me, and he had three cameras filming them filming me. So there's six cameras in a, in a, in a little room. And this went on for quite some time. We had a great time shooting it. Uh, and I had archival footage, which we meant we had to get approval, uh, fair use, and go through errors and omissions insurance. And, so, and then we had to wait till my, to see what would happen with my fake documentary. Uh, was anyone going to believe it? So you have to submit it to film festivals, wait for film festivals to accept it or deny it. And if they did accept it, wait for that festival to happen, go to that festival and shoot the result. All of that had to be done before Andrea could finish his film. So it was uh, doing two documentaries at once, which you know was a challenge for all of us, but it was a lot of fun to uh, attempt to do this hoax. And a so little bit meta, I imagine, as well. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so was it two years or three years? Five I years. Mean, five years. Five wow. years. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a great documentary. Thank you. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you as well, and I think we're going to open up questions uh, to you guys soon, uh, but with, uh, you know, a world now of alternative news and... Uh, Ow. Bye, Al. <laughs> alternative news and fake news, and as kind of an arbiter of, of, of that um, medium with a totally different intention... Thank you. That's the little word right. with the most meaning, intent. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, how do you feel now uh, watching that juggernaut kind of take off? In Well, I told you so. Mm. Uh, I've been telling you for mm. over 50 years. I've been saying the same thing. And now we're really, unfortunately, living it to the max. And it's depressing. Mm. And media literacy is a key element to breaking the chain. Mm. If we don't teach our children how to look for it, acknowledge it, recognize it, do something about it, it we're just gonna, we're doomed to repeat it. Mm. So hopefully this film will reach a lot of people and uh, give them a wake up call. Right. And I think it's really exciting that it's going into schools as an educational yes. um, film as well. Yeah, that's the most exciting part actually. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Um, I wanted to ask you as well. Uh -oh. What was I going to ask you as well? Um, <laughs> Make something up. Make something up. Okay, good. Um, I w oh, that's what it was. That's what it was, Joey. I was going to say, um, I you know, there's quite a few artists here um, uh, as kind of an activist and art maker. What advice do you give to other artists? Well, obviously, there's no money in this. I never, <laughs> <laughs> I never did it to earn a dollar. That was never the purpose of it. So you have to have smoke and fire coming out of your ass. You have to be totally devoted, passionate, believe in what you're doing, and not quit. And you know, the legacy is the longevity. I didn't quit. And I just don't quit is the advice. That's wonderful advice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we're now going to open it up to all of you. We've got a microphone um, in both aisles. If you would like to to come come down. Um. <coughs> one in the back. Hello. This was really wonderful. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you. Um, I am curious, how did you make a living? Uh, how did you survive? Because as you say... You I, were, I tell you the same answer. I have a 9 millimeter semi-automatic Smith & Wesson, and Japanese tourists are really easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I come up with crazy shit, like uh, aquariums for up, uply mobile guppies, condominiums for uply mobile guppies, uh, a bullshit detector watch. Where is, where is, uh, where's my cop? Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a, it's a bull taking a shit. You push the button, it flashes, moves, and makes a shitting sound. It's a satirical, 
it's a satirical invention, and I am able to sell them. Uh, I, I started as a painter, so I sold paintings. I sold uh, aquariums for Upley Mobile Guppies. However, uh, I earn a living is how I earn a living. It was never, never my major concern. It's a good question, but I don't really, other than stealing and ripping people off, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, Joey, um, how are the reviews for the Pandora documentary? Well, um, people bought it hook, line, and sinker, and I had it on the internet. That's a really good question. Thank you. And when we started releasing Art of the Prank, I didn't want people who saw Art of the Prank to go to the internet and say, I just saw Art of the Prank. Pandora's hope is bullshit. It's a hoax and they would have ruined it. So we pulled it off the internet and no one has been able to see it. Hopefully there'll now be a reason and a way to show it, uh, whether it's an extra on a DVD or whether we put it back on the internet or whether I showed in screenings with Art of the Prank, something like that, I don't know. But everyone totally bought into it, which is you know, usually what happens with my work. They believe it. Any more questions? Well, it's quite believable just to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the whole the, the film is actually an excellent. Well, film, it is plausible. And it's very. Thank you. It's it's everything but your teeth is is. Well, uh, that is a thank valid, you for bringing that up because it's really I, a valid film. The, the teeth were the total, you know, everything depended on me being able me, my being able to have those teeth in my mouth and not chew my lips or bite my tongue off. So here I am in Kentucky, and I call my dentist and I say, I, you know, hi, I'd like you to make me some shark's teeth. And he goes, you know, yeah, right, yeah. I said, no, I'm, I'm trying to do a hoax. Uh, I need some shark teeth. Uh, no, 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 I can't. Uh, I call him again, you know. I, I mean, I kept repeating. He says, well, I, it's not up to me. It's up to the guy who makes the teeth, the guy who, you know. I said, what's his name? I said, well, he says, I'll call him. So he called me, he called me like, no, he's, he doesn't want to do it. I said, where is he, where does he live? So he tells me, and I go over to the guy's house, to his lab, and I say, I'm Joey Skaggs, I'm an artist, I use the media as a medium, I create social, political, satirical works, you know, this is my intent, and I need shark's teeth that go in my mouth. He said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I'm gonna call the dentist and he's gonna do the moles for free. I said, okay. So he made the teeth, and once I had the teeth, everything else was easy. So, thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Are there pranks that other people have done that you respect a lot? Or, or could you? Or sure. I mean, there are a lot of people out there. It's yeah. a big world, and uh, you know, uh, it takes a. I'm not saying about myself, but. For like Pussy Riot, it takes a lot of courage, you know, to do those things. They're willing to go to jail, and one has to realize that there are consequences for all of these actions. And sometimes the ultimate consequence is either incarceration or being hurt or killed. So that's what a lot of activists are up against. So. Joey, do you ever feel bad for pranking anyone? I, I, I call it suspending empathy. <laughs> um, I was wondering if there were any pranks that you didn't end up doing for some reason or um, yeah. people didn't want to join you on that. No, not that they didn't want to join me, but I had to pull the plug. Many years ago, I decided uh, because of what was going on with AIDS and people who were terminally ill, uh, I would do a dating service for the terminally ill called What the Fuck or Fuck It or, or uh, The Final Curtain. <laughs> Till Death Do Us Part. That's what it was. Thank you. That's my memory chip, Judy. <laughs> and uh, so I had friends initially fill out forms that we put on a website. Uh, and they, they listed their terminal disease and what they were looking for. And I was hoping to just... <laughs> you know, plant the seed and get real terminal ill people. And I thought I was actually gonna do a service for terminally ill people. 
And then, of course, the media started calling, and they were obviously the media, and they were pretending that they were terminally ill, and they just really wanted to get the names of other terminally ill people so they could write about you know, their sexual interests. And it became more of a, a, a really disgusting <laughs> sexual thing. So I just said, fuck it, I'm pulling the plug. Literally. <laughs> Thanks for the question. So, and thanks for everybody hanging around. I'm really sure. impressed that you did this. Thank you. So you you kind of brought up the alternative facts and fake news, and and you know this kind of this film begins before there's a direct discussion of this, but now we're sort of in a different world. Um, I'm actually really enjoying the institution of the media right now. I appreciate the institution of the media. I want them to. Uh, be strong, be yes. aggressive, yes. right? Um, yes. You know, you basically say, hey, believe me, and then you make fun of us for believing you. Well, so a tear just ran down my <laughs> leg. <laughs> let's, let's get back to something else. Sure. Uh, my intent. Okay. My intent is not to go, ha ha, I got you. My intent is for the audience to go, aha, I fell for that. What else did I fall for? My intent is, who are you? What do you believe in? How did you come to your beliefs? If you don't question the source of your beliefs, why not? So that's the intent of my work. If you are the victimized journalist, I do have some empathy for you, but I have to suspend empathy. I have to first fuck you and then apologize to you or have you apologize. Sounds like but a great relationship. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's fight and fuck, fuck and fight. Show and tell. Um, that's, that's really what it is. Wh who, do you, who do you write for? I don't write at all. OK, so you're not a journalist. You're just playing. No, I'm not playing at all. I'm, I'm actually oh. just curious. I, oh. um, I mean, we, we, we look at like a lot of this sort of vintage footage of um, you know, 80s journalists with big hair, they're, they come off as totally ridiculous. But I really honestly want the media to do its job right now. I want We all to want great. the media to do its job. Deborah can speak to that. Deborah is the editor of, of uh, Extra, put out by FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy Reporting. Deborah's here with James, and, and they, are, they are media activists. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all want. We, you know, this is, this is the, the, the intent. But what, it, what this ends up looking like is a little bit more like um, the disinformation campaigns that they're talking about on That's Facebook. That's not what I do. Week. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not Trump doing a disinfo disinformation campaign. I'm not a, I'm not a corporation doing a disinformation campaign. I always tell the truth. The difference is I'm not fucking you and, and just taking your money. I'm, I'm embarrassing you, but then I'm revealing the truth. They're not doing that. They don't want you to know that it's bullshit. They want you to just pay for whatever it is that they sold you. They sold you a goods, a service, or a philosophy. And that's their job, to keep selling you a, a product, a service, or a philosophy. My job is to say, the, they, they think being, about it. They being? Corporations, uh, religion, uh, the people in the media, people with a political agenda. Yeah, they ha everyone has an agenda. They're selling you something. I'm selling you something. What do you sign? Awareness. Uh, something I really appreciate in your work is that it's so cheeky. It's very tongue in cheek. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and it, f for me as well as an artist, it's really hard for me to find a line between what is um, pushing that boundary and what is going way over it. Um, but I admire that there's never any cruelty from from you. It's a very playful. Thank you. Uh, right. I try not to be cruel. Yeah, it's it's it, you're a very playful art maker, right. Right. and um, I, I I'm just curious about how do you make sure that you're never going into um, that other side. I, I think very long and hard about it. And I'll tell one story, which is in a, a book research, uh, Pranks Volume Eleven. Of those of you who may have seen it. Uh, in the 60s, I had an idea for a prank. I was going to do, I was sick of art movements, funk, junk, punk, op, 
And every, every month was a new art movement. And if you didn't do it, you weren't going to get into a gallery. And as a serious artist and as a painter, I wanted to exhibit my work. I wasn't going to get a show unless I was doing what was there. So I decided to create an art movement called the Bow Movement. <laughs> and I was going to... My, my first piece was going to be called obstruction art. I was going to build a big tampon or a fish or a big turd, put it in the back of a truck, have six or eight of my friends go through the Lincoln or Holland Tunnel, stop in the middle of the tunnel, and, and put out this giant turd and drive through. And it would stop the traffic, and they'd have to call the police and the fire department and the, the tow truck come in. And I'd have a film crew on both ends of the tunnel, all the traffic, you know, the whole thing. And they'd, you know, pull out, a, you know, turn out and unplug it. And that would be my piece. Only I thought, well, what if someone dies in the car? What if there's a fire? What if someone's transplanting, you know, taking a heart that has to be transplanted? What are the consequences of that? And I thought about consequences. And consequences have always been forefront in my mind about everything that I do. I might endanger myself. That's OK. Uh, you might be endangered if you work with me, but I will tell you <laughs> what I think th those dangers are. And if you're willing to do it, you know what the consequences are. Sarah knows. She's been in a number of my things. And there's always the element of, of danger, because you never know what the fuck you're going to uncover. When I was a priest in a confessional booth, I mean, I upset a lot of people. When I was the dog meat soup, a Korean guy, I mean, people wanted to kill me because I was you know, selling dogs to be eaten. Uh, so I've pushed a lot of buttons, but I'm willing to do that. I'm not willing to put someone else into harm's way. And that's the difference. Great. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've had a great time talking Thank you. with you. Me too. Uh, is there one more question? We can take one more Let's question. Let's go get drunk. You actually mentioned that now. I was thinking about the consequences. I got the intent, but were there ever serious consequences? Like, have you ever been sued or something? Oh, like that? yeah. I mean, attempted to be sued, arrested, deposed, appeaded. That's with the territory. Yes. Yeah. But I'm, I'm willing to do that. So I'm an asshole. <laughs> And with that, <laughs> <laughs> I'm your <laughs> asshole. <laughs> thank you, sir. With that, I want to thank both of you. Thank, thank you, you all. Joey. Thank you, Katie. Thank May. you. Thank you all for coming tomorrow.